Fine. Could we just note for the record the two individuals from the galley that spoke out? I think that needs to be noted. Yeah, I'm not interested. They've noted that they already spoke last week. They have no comment this time. Waiting for a response from us. Apologize. Downstairs with other residents. We're just about to adjourn. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Earlier, we can get on better. So um, we are about to go into the first item on the agenda, uh, the uh, off-road vehicles. So they were in package. You should have some materials from Tony Capola. Some this uh, from other towns, and we'll put up uh, to Bob to quick recap on what they say, and then also uh, with the PD about uh, the relations officers reaching out to uh, the neighbors, the area, and uh, I can share that with you as well. So uh, would you like to uh, go first, Jennifer? Can you hear us? Yes, I'm sorry. What did you say, Roche? I apologize. What did you? Can you not hear us in general? Or? I, I, no, I can hear you. Okay. So, uh, are, are you ready to uh, give a brief summary of the handouts that? You sure. I'm I'm happy to do that. So. Um, what you received again, as as uh, your town manager indicated, um, were just just a small sample of um, some of the other ordinances that are out there in other municipalities. Um, I principally just gave you uh, communities where I know that this is an issue, um, communities that uh, have been experiencing in particular, and, and this is not true, fortunately, of your community, but um, rallies of these types of um, off-road vehicles um, in large number. Um, you know, that's that's something that has uh, been a big issue in recent months. Um, and uh, one way that uh, many of the communities, and, and I know that this is something that um, is pending in some other towns as well. Um, one of the one of the things that some of the, the cities have done 
um, is establish a restriction on the sale of fuel um, for these types of vehicles as, as a way to get at that particular type of activity. Um, what you have, as you know, in your town is um, in a complaint about an individual property um, and, uh, you know, it's a complaint with regard to, um, again, this property being used for uh, activity of these types of vehicles um, and resulting in noise, resulting in, um, uh, you know, dirt being generated and, and transferred to neighboring properties um, and, you know, concern about uh, being unable to enjoy um, their own and again neighboring properties being unable to enjoy their their property and impacting uh, their quality of life. Um, so you know, um, principally um, nuisance claims, um, but certainly as your introduction to uh, your own ordinance reflects, is that really. Um, the reason why this was endeavored upon uh, when the ordinance was adapted now um, some 12 years ago um, was because of specifically it appears because of the noise issue. Um, and I wanted you to see, um, and I know that, uh, you know, the ordinance from the other communities I gave you um, were not particularly long, but I wanted you to see the fact that um, you know, the number of them don't identify a decibel um, as yours does. Um, some of them have the separate noise ordinance. Um, and, um, you know, some of the, there was one in particular, and I do think it was Middletown, um, but they they do something that's much more discretionary in terms of their language. Um, if you look at Middletown, if you look at um, page 285, um, or I'm sorry, 285 um, colon 21, so page 21 and 285-24 subsection E there, it says no person, noise, no person shall operate or cause to be operated any motor driven cycle, all-terrain vehicle or snowmobile, which is designed, modified, altered or broken um, as to emit unreasonably loud or offensive levels of noise. Um, so, and then above that, um, no person shall operate, so this is on private property, no person shall operate or cause to be operated any motor driven cycle all terrain vehicle or snowmobile upon any private property within the city except with express permission of the owner. Um, no person shall operate or cause to be operated such vehicle in any manner which would cause nuisance, annoyance, alarm, or harassment of any kind to persons, domestic animals, or game. So um, something, you know, that's more discretionary, more broad. I wanted you to see that type of language as well. Um, it's, you know, sometimes when we use language like that, it becomes problematic as far as enforcement is concerned. Um, so, but I, you know, I wanted to just make you aware that, uh, you know, that there was, you know, some potential there. Um, I think, What's important again, because so many communities that the sort of current issue with regard to the use of these vehicles um, is is use of them on public roadways, um, use of them on sidewalks, um, use of them on commercial properties, whereas here you've got a private property issue. Um, and what you'll know about um, private property, um, by and large, and I think that this is this is true pretty much across the board, is that as far as private property is concerned, um, you know what the municipalities are concerned about is is there permission of the owner to use on private property because that has been an issue through the years of, um, you know, certainly with vacant large parcels of vacant land um, being used uh, for this type type of activity too. So. Um, I don't know if you have particular questions. I mean, I, it, you know, I think uh, probably you want your discussion to center around, um, you know, the things that we've talked about previously, the hours in which this activity is allowed. Um, you, you know, you have specific provision in terms of uh, setback of the activity. 
again, you've got that decibel level restriction. Um, so that's, uh, you know, those are the things that I think that you look at to, again, address this issue, which is occurring on private property. You know, do you want to revisit those particular portions of the ordinance and consider um, making uh, amendment or revision to those those sections because um, it, you know that's that's the thing that's gonna uh, be most likely to address the concerns that you have been presented by the couple of property owners that have spoken. Okay. Yeah. So um, before you arrive, Mr. Mayor's. Yeah, talking about uh, I spoke with Newton Sean Solon leading conversation with uh, neighbors um, in China. Um, so he in his assessment he believed this is an enforceable uh, ordinance it's well written but uh, section 70-127 uh, but may read this to you with respect to privately owned land or ordinance no police officer shall initiate an investigation or attempt to enforce or issue summons to enforce this article except upon complaint. So he pretty much says, unless there's a formal complaint, maybe you can't reach out to your neighbors and start asking questions. But if you do, there are certain things in our ordinance about measuring the decibel level from the uh, of the vehicle, you know, 20 inches away. Know, when it's idling, certain decibel level, uh, and even subject to the hours of operations, but it's not something that we can do when I'm going to go and uh, ask questions. <coughs> That's Bishop Short spoke with uh, some of the neighbors there on the other side. We already have an ordinance enforceable that no one made a complaint. Kind of an unused ordinance. Unless someone willing to complain, I don't see much future changes. A couple of the ones provided as examples and some excellent ideas like limiting the hours of operation and requiring written permission from the property owner. Because then that property owner could be held responsible to know who gave that person permission to ride. But with that caveat that it has to be from a complaint, can't be written by written in by the police department, that kind of handcuffs everything. I would hope that someone had a serious problem if you want to make a complaint. Uh question, uh Jennifer, do these other Regulations, I haven't looked through them all, but I've looked at the, some of the stuff. And, but are, are they all initiated by complaint too? Or there, or I so, not, so I'll say this to you, not all of them mention that, okay? But, um, you, you know, this is the type of ordinance we talk about, you know, what is the body that we look to administer and enforce? And so often the body that administers and enforces ordinances is the police department you know, because there are 24 seven operations. So, you know, um, you know, in terms of having zoning in force and so on and so forth, they're, they're not there at nights and on the weekends, um, you know, oftentimes when, you know, issues arise when people are at home and, and not at work and so forth and so on. So, you know, it, it, when, when you talk about the police enforcing, of course, they're, they're responding to a complaint. You know, it just so happens that your ordinance set or ordinance specifically says, um, you know, the decision was made when it was was drafted. I would imagine that it was something that probably was discussed um, that, you know, you you as a town decided um, you wanted uh, the enforcement process to commence by complaint. Um, and you thought that that, you know, that that was important to put that in there. Um, you know, I've, I've done that. 
um, or I did not draft, as you know, this was before my time, this ordinance, but I've done that with regard to blight. I think I talked to you about this when we, when we first started talking about this issue. I've done that myself with regard to blight um, ordinances. I've put in, you know, that the process starts by complaint, um, you know, because um, I've, I, that was my recommendation um, to a couple of towns when I wrote the ordinance because we didn't want it to be an anonymous thing um, because we th thought that it could be something that could be abused. Um, so from that perspective, so, you know, that's again, um, you know, I don't, I don't know how it comes into your PD, but for it's sort of an, a statement of an obvious thing, right? Um, they're not, they're not going to be going out there and looking to enforce all the ordinances that you have on your books without a complaint coming into the department, you know, because they're obviously they're dealing with um, the ordinance enforcement is not sort of necessarily depending on what it is, their typical day to day um, incidents that they're investigating, you know, they're 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 investigating, you know, criminal activity, typically motor vehicle. Um, that's a large part of what they do. So, um, you know, that doesn't concern me in any way that I'm not seeing it represented across the board because I just think it's an obvious thing that for whatever reason you chose to state in your ordinance and not all do, so. Megan, the definition of what a complaint is, I mean, I guess anonymous complaint is not good enough. I don't, I don't, what, right? Okay, right. That's going to be my question. Yeah, our, our ordinance says a formal complaint. Right. Maybe that's part of the issue because I know sometimes neighbors are friends, but you know, this thing is kind of annoying, and it's like really don't want to put my name out there. But you know, but they're you know, but it's bothering them. So maybe if we can change the wording as far as formal complaint to just complaint, but if it's anonymous, that's fine, and maybe it allows them to go out there. I don't know legally if that's a big def, you know definition change or not. Um, but I do like also like Charlie was saying, I do like the idea of putting some hours as well. I think we had talked about the hours issue last time and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the hours as it stands right now is what ten to eight. Yeah, what are the hours? Eight to seven. Eight, eight to eight. Um, eight to eight. And then eight to eight during the week. And it's from Saturday. And Saturday. Saturday. Yep. Sunday to six. Then Sunday, I, I, I think that I remember one of my impressions from the last meeting was that's a pretty wide range of time. Yeah. And yeah. when I think about it, especially as it gets darker and darker, I think our tolerance for noise in the evening hours gets lower and lower. So when I think about how this would, you know, people driving around their ATVs at 7 p.m. on a Tuesday evening in November. Um, that's a pretty late time to be doing that. So I would I would think maybe a simple way of doing this, and, and this is you know an ordinance, so this is something that we can revise on a continuous basis. But maybe looking at the hours and seeing maybe a more confined time range might be something that would be amenable to to the neighbors and those that don't utilize ATVs, but also still allows people to to use their APDs on their private property. Um, what do we think about the hours as they stand right now? I can I just make one quick comment? Sure. Yeah. One of it, listen, you're not you're not overly broad at all. Like if you look at the samples I gave you, you're not overly broad in terms of hours. But one thing that did occur to me, and this is only because I experienced this, this so this is a legal opinion. But I did, I, I did have the experience last year um, of ha actually, so let me, last year we didn't have snow, it may have been the year before, of encountering a snowmobile in the dark. Um, and I think that, that that point that you made is a very good point. Um, because if, if, they're, if they're doing something they're not supposed to be doing, um, which is maybe crossing a public roadway with a snowmobile, or riding along in the public right of way, 
um, that's something that could be very um, concerning if there's inclement weather um, and, you know, to the, to the people that are supposed to be on the roadway, right? Um, so that, I think that's a good point and whether or not you want to do something seasonal with the hours, um, you know, we certainly can, we can do that as well. Um, but I think the, the point of maybe it being, uh, eight o'clock being too late, um, for the winter months is, is considering inclement weather and what issue that may pose, um, if they're not in the area where they're supposed to be. Um, you know, that's a separate issue in and of itself. Um, but, it, you know, maybe just having in people's mind, you're not supposed to be going beyond this particular time of day. Um, I think that that might be a good idea. Yeah. And so coming back to what you're trying to address here is private property. Right? We say right. private property, you have to about a lot, of period. Right? And so it's an odd issue. Uh, if, if people are got a snowmobile and they're going on Farmington Ave, they get pulled over. Yeah, I'm sure it's a matter of the difference. It used to be that the police are no longer allowed to engage them, but well, there is no regulation on the public right away. And the um, second one is you can have different hours unless you change the language in the ordinance, you still have to make a complaint. But if it's two hours a day, yeah, really. The, the complaint is what triggers yeah. Yeah. the enforcement by, by the police department. Yeah, I'm also not sure if the seasonal part is going to resolve some of the issues that we've heard in the prior meeting. For example, I understand, you know, dark at 7, 8 o'clock at night in November, that's, uh, I get it, but, yeah. you know, and the same thing now it's June or July at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock mm -hmm. at night, and it's still light out, who's going to the barbecue, who's eating outside, so I don't know if doing it, you know, just because it's darker at that point is, is going to resolve all that. We're not going to resolve all the issues, but I think that's still going to be a problem to some of the neighbors. But if they're on, they're on private property, they don't belong. I mean, uh, doesn't matter what time of day, uh, it's light out or dark out, they're on private property. But a complaint has to trigger all the action. I mean, that's a key here. Uh, whether uh, I know what the state, we wouldn't take an anonymous complaint. We will not act on an anonymous Because it turned out dealers were going after dealers. You know, it, it was a harassment thing. So I don't know, maybe Jen has an answer on that. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Peter, I'm not necessarily, I, I can hear you, but I, I don't know that I completely heard the question. So if you could maybe just repeat that for me, I would appreciate it. Yeah, the question comes whether we can accept an anonymous complaint and base our enforcement on that, or if it has to be a formal complaint. And, and as a follow-up to that, just since we're on this discussion, you know, what would be the underlying concerns from other towns where you see these sorts of ordinances that would lead them to decide not to accept anonymous complaints to trigger enforcement action? Like what would be the underlying concerns? Well, I think I'll answer that question first. I mean, I think that it certainly um, what, what the concern is in terms of accepting anonymous complaints is that um, they are perhaps more freely made Right. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, I think, con concerns that um, it's that process is abused, um, that it if if there's a circumstance where there are bad relations between neighbors, um, you know, the be more likely to try to use the process against the neighbor that they dislike. Um, in an instance where they don't have to put their name on a complaint. Um, and, you know, in, in the blight scenario too, um, where um, towns have taken the position not to accept anonymous complaints, um, oftentimes the complaint is actually made by a submitted form. 
So that's not obviously what happens in the circumstance where it's made through the police department. It's, you know, a call in, they're not submitting a form um, and, uh, you know, police officer will, will take the complaint by phone, may go out to the property to take the complaint, may have them come in, depending on what process they feel they need to observe. And certainly, you know, you give your PD discretion with regard to that, right? Um, because, uh, you know, if you have an issue within a town that has a lot of activity, um, particular behavior, you want them to, to have the process from an administrative perspective that they need to have so that it's not interfering, you know, with their day-to-day -day execution of their, of their duties. So, um, so I, you know, again, I don't know, um, uh, Roche, I think that you spoke to the chief. Did you talk to him at all about this particular issue of anonymity? and what his thinking was about that. I mean, it's not something that I think that as a, the administrator that he would necessarily I mean, support. His, his, uh, he, he's just reading the ordinance, right? The way it's written, I know he so be comfortable going in and investigating it. It, should, it says don't do it, so it should not be going in without the complaint. You know, I mean, I gotta tell you, you know, I got to tell you some about anonymous complaints. So all I can tell you is based on my, my experience in law enforcement. We received an anonymous complaint in the DEA office in Los Angeles one day, and uh, we had a duty agent that would accept it, much like if you call Earl and someone's going to answer the phone. And uh, it was an interesting complaint, and that complaint was anonymous. And um, I don't know, the agent, in his discretion at that point in time, decided that he'd look into it. And uh, it's... It, started the biggest money laundering investigation we ever did in LA. So, you know, you can't always discount the anonymous complaints, that's my point. Um, and law enforcement needs to probably take a look at um, who, who call, you know, the what the, cir what the circumstances are, Mayor, as to yeah, why they're small, seeking uh, anonymity. Yeah. Well, yes, and, yeah. and it's a small town, and it's not like they got to drive from one side of LA to the other, which is, you know, different. You know, they're, they're driving in a small town, and they're on patrol all the time. And, and we, you know, I think we need to talk to the chief about it a little bit, too, before we change anything. But, but I, you know, if somebody called in the PD and they handed it to the patrol unit on that shift and just said, hey, you know, we got a complaint, you know, no names or anything, just drive by. You're driving by there every day, every night, whatever shift you're on, just see if there's anything to it. Um, you know, then maybe we can take it further depending on what happens. But I, I, so I'm not sure it's the best idea to um, not report an anonymous complaint and not pass it along to the PD. To, in their discretion, again, it, it'll, it'll leave a little bit more discretion to the chief and the lieutenant, the sergeant, and the officer. But to, to uh, you know, take a drive by, they're driving by there anyway, anyway, on their patrol. So, you know, that's. Just on that particular minor issue now. But so is there a, is there a duty to act on on any complaint, even if it's anonymous, or I guess based on it's, maybe it's different from the federal it's, well no, it's a thing. It's right. Right. And it's not the same discussion. I mean, I, you know, they called us up and said somebody's dealing drugs in a house down the street. Uh, you know, I mean it's all tied to it's mm -hmm. what else you got going on. And I mean it's a lot of factors in it. Okay. I think I think in a, a small town. Um, I mean, not that small, but, but, you know, again, you have officers on patrol and they, they hear there's a complaint on some street. I would hope, you know, they're going to add it into their daily uh, patrol and go by there a few times over the next week or two and see if it, it holds water, right? If, right. Hey, if somebody complained and, and granted the, the, the reverse side of that is yes, people can use it as a little bit of a weapon, but if nothing's really going on, it doesn't really matter, you know? You're trying to get your neighbor for something you don't like your neighbor and you make all these complaints and you know the officer you know i mean he's familiar with his part of town that he's uh, patrolling and he said oh, i drive by there every night i don't i don't see x or z or whatever they complain about so okay fine there's nothing there if there is something there you know they drive by an area and they hear a lot of noise or they see some other issues under the ordinance then i i don't see why they couldn't take action because it's kind of their job is to take action with what they see 
So, you know, it's a fine line, though. It's a, it's a fine line, but, but trusting their judgment and discretion. That's what they're trained yeah. to do, right? So that's what they do. So um, that's why I'm not too happy that it has to be a formal complaint, honestly, because there's no reason why you couldn't put that out there to patrol and say, hey, you know, this area, that area, whatever, whatever, whatever wherever it is. And actually, the blight thing, too, that, that boggles my mind, because if I call in a blight complaint, Pretty easy to drive by that house zoning enforcement or or the PD and say, wow, that's a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. If I drive by the house that's a blight on Elton Road, one drive by, I pretty much know yes, a valid complaint. I don't need to have the name of somebody that gave me that information to, to act on it then, right? You can see it with your own eyes. You can hear things with your own ears. So that's kind of the other side of it. Um, you know. Uh, so we have to have a conversation with the chief. I would like to talk to the chief a little bit first, just get his thoughts on it, of course, because he's the one that ultimately would be responsible to enforce the ordinance, the current ordinance, and whatever we change, right? Whatever we change in it, um, which I think there's some changes we probably need. I think the hours are one thing. To me, even eight in the morning, it's, it's, it's pretty early. early. That's pretty early in the morning. Uh, you know, if somebody was doing things by my house at eight in the morning, that's noisy every day. That's especially on a weekend day. Yeah, I mean, I think we have the. I don't know what the time should be. Maybe we could talk a little bit more to Jennifer and and uh, Bob Lyon and figure out what, what's fair to the homeowner and use of their private property as they see fit. But you know, then also that they, they can't interfere with the use of the neighbor's private property. To, you know. With what they're doing on the property, so it's a again, it's another fine line, um, you know, that we have to figure out. But I think the hours could be changed, and maybe something with the decibels too. I don't know if the decibels were with the decibels, Jennifer, like within reason, or the decibels kind of low on our ordinance now. We have a limit, so, right? Number, so number. you did receive you did receive some information on that. Yes. Um, that is one thing that I, I do want to do a little bit more of looking into okay, good. Um, because, uh, you know, the, this, this noise level meter, um, uh, you know, that's something else I think that is important um, to get uh, just some feedback from the police department about what they're seeing as far as the vehicles are concerned. Um, I, I did start to research uh, that a bit and you know I have some some stuff that was conflicting so um you know that's something I'll have a conversation with the chief about specifically um because operationally you know we want to make sure too um you'll see that it says uh does not exceed 80 um db and then it has sub it has um an a in parens thereafter I want to make sure that we're using the the right level um as well um because i know a little bit about about um because i had a, a case years ago um that was a nuisance case i yeah so i want to have a conversation with him about that issue if that's something that um you know you want to look at as as a potential revision i think we we need i think it is true we need to you know get a sense of you know what are the types of vehicles that that they're seeing and what is most common um with regard to that so yeah, yeah. right i think we might tailor you know tailor a little bit to our town right specific to what what they do see which would be important to see what you know what what anonymous complaints or what they have seen on their own observation um you know as they drive around and uh, recognizing that you know they're they're Unfortunately, rural in every town is busier. Uh, our PD lately is very busy, um, which is really not good. Um, I mean, good in some cases what they're doing, and bad, bad in other places because there's more, some more crime issues around uh, rural. But um, you know, again, they are out there driving around. So yeah, I, I think I, I would think the decibels, the hours, those are those are pretty important to, to look at, right? And then and then the complaint, you know. But I want to talk to the chief a little bit about what, what he thinks about that. And again, we wouldn't tie their hand that it's anonymous complaint that, you know, they may not get to it today or tomorrow or next week, but but it's out there in that officer's mind. And I'm sure as he drives by, you know, that's something that would be helpful. But, right, let's get, so we can get the chief's comments about several things. And what else? What else do you guys think? What do you think about all this? The only other thing I'm, I'm thinking about, and since we're talking about it, just, yeah. just ideas, yeah. 
And I was wondering if I didn't recall seeing it in any of these when I looked through it, but anything about maybe the size of the property, you know, if someone has three or four acres versus someone has an acre, and, you know, houses are closer together if it's an acre, so it's more of a disturbance than if something is more spread out. I mean, I don't know if that's something there, other town. Acres, but so, big, 50 feet of the it's a bigger property, then you could put mm -hmm. different Any sets. bigger or something. That helps, yeah. Might yeah. help with us. Might not help the noise, might help with us. But that brings me to my do I'd like to see the landowner have to issue written permission to the operator of the vehicle? Because the only one we're going to be able to hold responsible is the landowner. There's no way to track down somebody who drives a dirt bike through your farm. Right. Yeah. If it's if it's their own property, you know, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't. So that is part of your ordinance written permission of the landlord, land, landowner is supposed to be given. Um, and that is supposed to be produced um, if requested by a police officer. Um, and if you're without that, that's a basis um, for enforcement action being taken. Um, so, and, and, you know, that, that obviously is something that you see reflected in the other samples that I gave you as well. Um, just going back to what Sandy said, though, um, that was the other thing that I mentioned at the beginning, I think you could look at is under your operational restrictions, and this starts at the bottom of page nine, um, in section 17-124, the proximity to adjoining land provisions, proximity to public road, and hours of operation also have a distance requirements in them. Um, the question is, is whether or not you want to enlarge any of those. Um, so, you know, that's something else I think that you need to give consideration to. Um, and, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, putting in an acreage requirement, well, is that, is that something that you want to get into or do you want to make the distance um, from the residential dwelling, uh, you know, the, the activity to to be at a greater distance from neighboring properties. Um, so um, that's just something to think about. Um, you know, and I and again, I was I I said neighboring property because something that is um, sort of interesting, right? Is um, you have proximity to adjoining land, you have that requirement, no person shall operate an ORV less than 25 feet from the adjoining property line unless such person owns the abutting property or has written permission, right? But then under hours of operation, you have the operation of any ORV within 250 feet of any residential dwelling. So the difference again, between dwelling and property line, um, is there something about that that you wanna change as far as those distances are concerned? So I think you need to reflect upon that as well um, because that that's um, obviously, you know, that's going to address, again, the concerns that you're hearing about this, this private property use are principally noise and, uh, you know, generation of dirt and, uh, you know, em emission of, of dirt as well. Helps the neighbors who maybe don't like the name go into that, but it's also, you know, still allowing the person who wants to rent it on their own private property the opportunity to do so. Further than worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's I think it's definitely yeah. that's another thing we could do. Definitely to keep it more in the center of someone's property, no matter how big it is, you know, right? right? That it's not closer to the property line, uh, certainly to the dust and to whatever else is going on. Yeah. That, that 25 feet. Distance parameter seems kind of close, pretty close. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's it's essentially yeah. 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 from here to the, the middle of the, the room. Right. Yeah. Oh, so that's something else. So, uh, I mean, you could make it like half a mile. That's for sure. I don't know. Yeah. I'm thinking so that the noise just. Yeah, we, yeah, we have to figure out what's. Uh, so. Please, yeah, yeah. Forgive me, I'm not an attorney, but a lot of course, but it yes. seems like it's going to drag out for a while before we can Now, these folks have an immediate problem. Well, my question sounds to me like you 
going to have to make a complaint to get action sooner than later. I mean, can I respond to that statement? Yes, yes, yeah, 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 Distinguished member of the commission, my name is Roland Borcher, 121 Dutton Charlotte. So, um, very happy to hear some of the conversation that's going back and forth. Uh, it's not exactly what we wanted to hear, but one of the things we really need to emphasize is the fact that we're not here to, to, to make uh, complaints about a particular ordinance in place. That's a place where you're here to essentially amend that specific ordinance. Because it doesn't work. Um, I can ride my, my ATVs 25 feet from my property, from my neighbor's property line all day long, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day. I can make noise, toxic fumes to, to my heart's content, all operating within the guidelines of this ordinance. And no law enforcement official, I mean, they, they can certainly speak to me and say, hey, you know. Um, you know, maybe you're not being a good neighbor, uh, but it's all within the guidelines of the ordinance. So one of the things we want to emphasize again is that ordinances are put in place to protect the health, well-being, and quality of life of our residents. One of the things I'd like to ask you this evening is to review the ordinance and say, hey, what was how would I feel if this was going on? Roche, I had this conversation with you. This was going on in your backyard. You'd be a mayor of Mike Mark's office every day asking for the terms. And, and again, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. you know, I mean, this is, and the thing is, honestly, this doesn't just affect us, it affects the entire neighborhood. A lot of the neighborhoods just say, look, we pay a lot of taxes, our, our quality of life. Have to listen to this. It has a negative impact on property values. Again, I'm not. I'm, I'm pro. I love motorcycles. I, uh, I love going fast on two wheels, four wheels, whatever. So I love it, but not in my backyard. I shouldn't be exposed to it. It impacts my health. It impacts my wife's health. She has asthma. Reader, she has some specific things that, that impact her. There's some other neighbors, and I've had instances where I've I've been in at neighbors' parties, you know, little you know, little kids' parties where this activity starts, and all of a sudden, you know, they have to take it in. And, you know, how many five-year-old birthday parties you can have, and, you know, in your child's um, you know upbringing. So it has a negative impact on the um, on the neighborhood as a whole. I agree, 25 feet is ridiculous. I have some articles um, back from the Mayor Selena days that specifically refer to 150, 250 feet away from property owners. Somehow maybe a zero might have fallen off somewhere along the line on the know. translation. But the point of the matter is that, again, we're not here to make complaints. I don't want to be, every time I hear, you know, this, you can hear this noise in my basement. I don't want to be getting a complaint in the face. They're short staffed as it is, they don't have the measurement devices to, to monitor this activity. Hey, I do. I, I bought a vessel below, so I know it's on the However, so what? Kind of uh, law enforcement officials get there, they could be inside having dinner. And meanwhile, I'm the only one that can have personally impacted by this, aside from the police officer that had, that had to waste his time to come over to our side of town where he could have been perhaps addressing um, a more serious uh, issue. So we're asking you to, again, take a look at a good look at the ordinance. Ask yourself, how would I feel if this was in my backyard as a resident? And ask yourself also, what impact does this have on the town of Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And that's a yes, absolutely. <clears throat> so good evening, Your Honor. Good evening. <laughs> I was present. My name is Lydia Borisuk. I am Roman's wife. Um, I live at 121 Shire Way. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a DEA agent, but I am a pharmacist and I do know the DEA agents in the Hartford office. You do? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So, um, not you for a problem. No, 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 I have to just to make sure. Yeah, you, you probably. Yeah. Um, 
So, so there you um, go. Thank you for your thoughtful discussion and thank you for considering the concerns that have been brought up by Irina and by my husband Roman. Um, previously, I was unable to attend, but I did take a couple of notes and listening to what you were saying, just to put some other thoughts in your mind when you're going to have the discussion. And I'd also like to um, put us where we are today. So this was, this ordinance was written 12 years ago. Something like that, yeah. Something like that, that was pre-COVID. Well, Pre-COVID. COVID has introduced teleworking into our homes. And I will tell you, I am currently the director of pharmacy at the VA Medical Center. And I was working from home. And when I was on conference calls, I heard the ATVs riding for three, four hours at a time which is very disturbing and it, it interferes with ability to concentrate when we're talking about very important things that take care of, you know, that, that really impact the way we care for our veterans. Okay. So we have a different time in which we are living now, which requires us to do things differently. And it also requires us to think differently. I never thought that I would have any of my staff working from home verifying medication orders and making sure patients were getting their medication safely. So I would like to challenge you to think differently as well and apply our current day environment to the decision-making process when you're, when you're really considering this. Um, I don't know what the definition of a formal complaint is. If it means that we have to call the, the police to have them come to the neighbor to say that there's a complaint, I'd like to know what that formal definition is, but I would also challenge you to change it in this day and age with the violence that we are, are encountering, there are some neighbors in our neighborhood that are not willing to step up because they're fearful of retaliation. Um, and we have to really respect that. We have to embrace that and respect what the current state in our country is looking like today. We have to watch. I mean, I'm a New Yorker, so I knew you are supposed to watch your app. But, it's, it's really unfortunate that we've come to that place, but I'd like you to respect that in your decision-making process and consider that seriously. Um, when you're considering the hours, I'm glad you're even thinking about doing that, but I'd also challenge you to think about how many hours of continuous writing is tolerable. Because continuous writing from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. doesn't work. This summer, we, set, we have a backyard with furniture and, and a dinner table, or whatever to eat, not once were we able to sit outside and eat dinner because of the writing along our property line. Forget about the distance of the dwelling to where they are. They were writing along the property line, and it was, I could smell the fumes, I could, I could see the dust, hard to breathe, it's aggravating my asthma, it is definitely affecting our health. So please take that into consideration as well. Um, uh, also, I know it's private property, but inviting people that are not living in that uh, residence to come on and ride also doesn't really help the cause. Um, come on down, have a party because we can ride. And you know, we have a motor classroom in her backyard. So come right down. It doesn't work well in a residential neighborhood. And the property in mind for now, they're all surrounded by houses. So if you were in one of those houses, as my husband said, how would you like it if you can't even sit in your own backyard? You know, can't use your chimney, can't do anything. You're using it. We're paying taxes for property that we can't even use. Um, I would also like to, to really say we have to respect our police officers. Um, we are a town that doesn't have a very large police force. We love our officers. Um, but we need to give them the opportunity to address the issues that are the really important ones. This is a nuisance kind of thing. Our officers need to be out keeping our neighborhood safe and not dealing with nuisance issues such as this. So please, let's try not to impose more work on them when we have more crime happening and kids driving through the neighborhoods and checking mailboxes and cars. That's, you know, that's been happening for way too long and we need to do something about that as well. Um, the decibel level, it is important, but it also needs to be considered when we have to work from home. Um, so I think that's it for today. So thank you so much for your attention. Yeah, and what 
what, what you both mentioned, there's certainly the, the wavelength that we all appear to be on, right? I think we're all headed. I, I many think of those oh, plans. Yeah, certainly we're all taken. That's not yeah. something that I had considered, but it's yes, absolutely right. It's a tough uh, issue. I mean, they're, you know, it's a private property issue, it's a neighborhood issue. So, yeah, sure. you sure can, of course. <laughs> My name is Rita Bissonette. I live at 135 Devonshire Way. Um, listening to all of your recommendations, I'm loving, I'm loving what I'm hearing. Um, but there are a few things, as the general has said, that um, I need to emphasize. Um, I have a special needs daughter um, who tires me, she naps most afternoons. And as Lydia addressed, it is continuous writing. It's not for an hour. We're talking for six hours at a time. So even if you moved it to from 10 o'clock to four o'clock, they're gonna go from 10 o'clock to four o'clock. Now, I'm at, if I'm out at my pool, having a party, the writing starts. They're 25 feet from the property line, but my cabana is only 25 feet into the property. Or whatever it is. I mean, we're adhering to the guidelines because obviously we've gone through all of that, the links of it and so forth. But it impacts our ability to enjoy our pool. And this um, this distance between the residents and the operation of these vehicles or bikes, it needs to be greater than 25 feet or 50 feet or whatever it is, because if I can't enjoy my pool, why do I even have it? It's one of the few things that we can do and my daughter can participate in that we can enjoy in the summertime. And if we have a party or the neighbors have a party, we should be able to have our party without this constant noise level, the dust level, the fumes. Because quite frankly, we have to get cleaned in. We can't leave it out because of the dust. It comes over like a wave. I actually took a video of it, so if you actually needed to see it um, with you know a larger screen, you probably didn't see it very well. But um, I think that um, also Lydia's point of uh, oftentimes it's more than one or two um, bikes that are being ridden or ATVs that are being ridden at one time. So if you take the noise level of one of those bikes and multiply it times three, four, five. Bring in the neighbors, bring in not neighbors, but the friends. You know, we got the train in the back. What's going to happen? It's just, it's not going to work. And I, and I would love to see because this track is actually closer to our houses than it is to theirs. Put in a track 25 feet around your house or 50 feet or whatever that guideline is and see how long it lasts. It's not going to. Yeah, they're riding back and forth. Yeah, well, they well. But are all of these kids? You know, I don't even know. There's a number of kids. And there's multiple kids in the house, right? Yeah. Five, I think. Five. Yeah. 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 They got nothing else to do. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as soon as pull it out, it's out there all the time. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Thank you. No, I appreciate the interview. Yeah, we appreciate all the input, and I, I think. Um, as you said, we are headed down the path of to um, hopefully uh, work on the actual the complaints that we've heard or the issues that we've heard. There are specific changes I think we can make that we should alleviate. I have a quick question, if I may. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, I don't want to interrupt any any no. of your no. comments, certainly. But um, so one of the things I was thinking about is um, because it was expressed before, you know, that these kids are going out there and and first of all, it's with some frequency and it's also, you know, we're not talking about just an hour or so here um, that it's a, a lengthier amount of time. And and certainly we could restrict that. But I do think that that's something that we need to ask the chief about um, because that becomes a proof issue. You know, if if people aren't going to submit a complaint, then if that's going to form the basis of finding somebody, 
Um, and, you know, we don't have direct evidence of how long somebody has been on. So we've, we've got to kind of flush that out, I think, with him. But um, I think, you know, that's something that I've added to my list to talk to him about. Um, but the other thing, too, that just strikes me is I am sort of curious, again, for, for our folks with personal knowledge who are in, in uh, your audience tonight, um, I, I'm curious when... You know, I've heard again, uh, you know, the fact that this is that there are multiple vehicles being used. Um, and I'm curious as to whether this is a situation where other uh, kids are bringing vehicles to the property or these are all vehicles that are in residence at this one property. Does anybody have any information on that? Because I am curious about that. They can't. No, we don't have answers yeah, for that. It's just multiple vehicles. Yeah. And so, and when you say multiple, are we? I heard the you know the word three used, but is there ever any more than that? Or I mean, are, are we talking about a half a dozen, or as much as a dozen, or at, at any point in time? <laughs> at least four. That's what we're hearing. Okay. Because all of that isn't, you know, it increases the impact. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I was thinking of getting the full walk a half a mile. Yeah. Um, having a good amount of distance. The bump, the bump I, was, I don't know what it would be getting right. some but analysis and we had right. a chance. Yeah. Getting the disposal a little down. And yeah, we're not automatically. They don't automatically work with the lots like the lot is a bigger thing. Right. Yeah. The, right. So you're not having it on a one acre property. Yeah. Um, then it's crammed up against neighboring properties. I think that's absolutely very true. Yeah. So, so we've got some more homework to do. You know, I'm sorry the process is a little painful, but it's painful. You know, it's just we got to do the right thing. You got to make sure it's an ordinance and it's the right thing. I think do it, you know, within within the proper legal bounds as, as well as agree with you as well. You know, we don't want to overburden our police department, but, um, you know, we, they, they would be the enforcers, but we'll, we'll work on that. So, we, yeah, we want to, we'll talk to the chief, Jennifer and I are going to do a little homework and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll reconvene shortly. Um, Can I ask you one? Yeah. Uh, sure. Sure. So all of these considerations that we have in terms of noise, setback, um, dust kickups, presumably that would be a sufficient basis to enact a um, a lot size limit or a setback limit on like that would be all the justification we really need, right? Yeah, I mean I I agree with that absolutely. Um, I think that. Uh, you know, this is something that has existed. I mean, it's in your ordinance as it is at this point, um, and you would just be expanding upon that um, based upon, you know, having received uh, testimony indicating that it's insufficient. Um, and, you know, it, it obviously, you know, it does make sense, of course, because depending on, you know, what the placement is of the residential structure um, on the property and, you know, as as was indicated um, by, I think she said her name was uh, Miss Bassett. Um, you know, it's interfering with an enjoyment of their pool and you know placement of accessory structures and so on. So, yeah, I mean, I think obviously there's justification there for increasing that distance. Right. So, Jennifer, I know you have some homework. Um, Going to talk to I'd like to talk to the chief as well at some point and just see his you know get his reactions to this you know because he would be the one that would have his uh, officers enforce it right but we'll we're going to work on the language you know make sure we get it get it right and, and see what seems right and we'll come back and talk about it a little bit more yeah we'll have draft recommended language for the next meeting okay. good all right and uh, we'll figure out the next meeting. Uh, uh, what are we thinking? We got our council meeting next week. And uh, sorry, I don't know. What about the holiday there? Yeah. Uh, um, what are you guys thinking? What are we thinking here? The, the, uh, when's, our first, when's our first meeting in January for the council? 
so Jeffrey did um, give counsel on this, uh, but uh, I would think that it would be allowed under your, under the Municipal Powers Act. That 7-148 is the Municipal Powers Act, the ability to um, to uh, set that threshold, yeah. The, the charter or the, the statutes give us the authority to do it by ordinance, even if there's a conflicting charter provision. Would think that that would be something that that you could undertake um, to do that. I also know that the budget will come Senator. So okay, the, uh, if we can do it, great. <laughs> so, state statute would supersede it's it's charter. Yeah, you know, it's like federal law would supersede state statutes. Originally, my only concern was. It did go to charter and the people of the town voted it down. And I'm like, okay, now we're going to do an ordinance and do an end run around it. However, if they do have a concern about it now that I, yeah. you know, understand it, go to a public hearing, well, now you can come out and right. do it that way. So um, I feel a little bit more comfortable that it'll still go to public hearing. Because I yeah. just, yeah. The, the perception will be out there that, oh, well, we voted the charter down. They're just going to do an ordinance and go around us. Yeah. You know, and that, you know, just want to be careful of that too, because. Yeah. We want to make sure to listen to them too. My observation on that is some people are just going to candidate because of the science. I'd say vote, vote no. Unfortunately, with the yeah. first question, it just went no. It, down. That it was, was it was also part of the omnibus, wasn't it? Uh, no, this was uh, yeah. I think it was. Last question. So yeah. this would give us the chance to ask the question individually yeah. without having to be looped in with all the other issues to consider. So, you know, it's I think this is really a question worth asking again yeah. and considering again. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, you know, the VA question. They voted it down to let us do an ordinance, but that's not, you know, unfortunately, we still have to examine the VA and Figure out what what we can do there to stop the uh, you know the budget overrun. So we were hoping for a little bit better option uh, with the ordinance, but unfortunately, you know, but it doesn't stop us from having a concern. And uh, you know, we have to we have to look at that. That's our job is to look at budgets. And Plus, this makes more sense. I mean, yeah, ten thousand yeah, dollars yeah. years ago right. years made yeah, sense. Yeah. Oh, right. I agree. I just wanted to make sure it still yeah. gave the public the opportunity. Oh, you're say, right. No, you're you right. Know, I the public yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's that's a fair way to do it. Yeah. Uh, I'll be good. Um, trust me, I'm not, I'm not against doing it. Because I think it makes if fun. I may, oh, I'm, yes. I'm sorry. I just wanted to share with you. I did find I knew there was a statutory provision. Um, I typically don't do the finance related um, advice giving, but section um, 7 148V uh, requirements for competitive bid bidding. Um, it, I won't read you the whole title of it, but it says notwithstanding the provisions of any municipal charter or any special act to the contrary, any municipality may by ordinance establish requirements for competitive bidding for the award of any contractor purchase of any real or personal property by the municipality. So, um, so yeah, I think that's the basis upon which the yeah, advice was given. Yeah. So again, that was 7-148 V as in Victor. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Great. Okay. okay. I, I'd like to make a motion to say <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the future. I like that. For an ordinance to establish the threshold for purchase of goods and services criteria for bid waivers and the use of state Connecticut or public purchasing source unit. Okay. Second on that. Second. 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 Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, so moved. Yeah, I'm sorry. The last bit is all sent to the town council for public hearing. I send it to the town council. I, what, I started off with like established a day oh, for public okay. hearing. All right, thank you. Yeah, that other is other included in the, <laughs> in the uh, motion and the second. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a date for the uh, council to consider next week. Do we have a time? It's already in the back. It's okay. All right. Yeah. Why is my for notice for this? Is... No, so that's the date. 
Take good care. Yeah, yeah Thank you. Too. Thanks. See you soon.